finding the range when you're given a domain and also the equation or sometimes we call it a relation um, is what we're going to be looking at today. So list the range of the relation y equals 2x plus 1 for the domain 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now in the previous lesson we learned that the range meant all of your y values. Okay, or basically you could almost uh, simplify that down and say, yeah, range is basically uh, an interchangeable name for y. And that's uh, stretching a little far, but it'll work. And we also know that the domain is basically a list for all of our x values. So here we go. Here's all of our x values given for this relation. And a relation is just a set of an ordered pair. So if we came over here and we set up an xy table, and we said that we have the domain. That means these are the x values, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So we have half of our relation set up and ready to go. Um, again, a lot of times you will see uh, instead of x, it will just be listed as the domain. So um, we use these terms interchangeably. And in the same way that uh, we said this is the y value, again, we could call it the range. So if we want to find the range, of this relation, um, we've got to go find these missing y values. How do we do that? Well, let's take a look at what else they've given us. They said that the relation is y equals 2x plus 1. And then they were kind enough to give us the x values, the domain. Okay. So um, if you notice, I've got this x in red. That's because we have x values. If I plug in 0 for this x, it looks like this. This x is the 0. I've plugged it into the equation. If I go and solve this, I'll know what y is. 2 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. y equals 1 when x is 0. When x is 1, plug it into the equation again. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. And then we do it again. Um, plug it in for y equals 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. And then for our last part here, uh, when x equals 3, or any other value you need the x to be, but in this case it's what was given to us, 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. Now, we don't go and make up our own x values like we did for linear equations. We take the domain that was given to us, list the range of the relation for this domain. In other words, I need these y values that fit these x values right here. So that's the reason we don't go and make up our own x values. We have to, to use what they gave us. And now we're ready to list our range. Our range is going to be, and remember last lesson we learned how to do this, we write out the word range, our colon, put a bracket, and then list your y values in least to greatest. So 1, 3, 5, and 7. So let's go ahead and write those out. 1, 3, 5, and 7, and let's see how my bracket looks here. There we go. And you're done. That's how we would do these types of problems. Um, I do want to take a moment here to take a look at a slightly more complex equation. What do we wind up doing when the uh, equation has an absolute value uh, symbol in there? So basically, what that's asking for is how far from zero is it? So um, we still want to find the range of this relation or equation uh, for this domain. And in this case, um, the domain that's given is negative 2, negative 1, 1, uh, and 2. And, and let's, just, let's just pretend like 3 never existed, so that way we don't have as large of a problem there. Um, this is what the absolute value means. I would plug in the x value for x. So y would equal the absolute value of negative 2 plus 1. What's the absolute value of negative 2? Well, it's positive 2. Positive 2 plus 1 is 3. So there we go. Now, for this next one, y equals the absolute value of negative 1 plus 1. What's, how far from 0 is negative 1? 
it's one spot away from zero, so positive one plus one is two. Then uh, we come down here, and this is where most people start to have a little bit of an issue here. They instantly want to say that the absolute value of positive one is negative one, and, and that's not true. We're still asking this basic question of how far from zero is this number inside of the absolute value sign. How far from zero is one? It's just one spot away, so it's a positive value still. So the absolute value of positive one is one, and then we add on this one on the outside, and we still get two. And same thing's going to happen right there for, for this positive number here. What's the absolute value of 2? It's still 2, and 2 plus 1 is 3. So we're free to go and list our range. And remember our lesson earlier, hey, if it happens twice, you only have to list it once. Or if it happens a million times, you only have to, to list it once. Um, and then the threes, you see that happened uh, two times, so we only have to list that once. We do have them in order from least to greatest, and that's it. We found the range for this relation when the domain was negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 2.